So welcome, uh, glad to have you here. My name is Olivier Schwab, I'm Managing Director at the Forum. This is a short session uh, with two of our, uh, of the Forum's Board of Trustees uh, members. Um, and the way we're gonna conduct this, there's no moderation, it's a dialogue between the two of you. And um, you know, certainly uh, feel free to take questions from the audience if you want. But the yeah. way I propose to get started is, um, you know, we have on the stage, we have uh, Andre Hoffman. Uh, Andre, you're the chairman of uh, Masella, but you're also vice chair of Roche and fourth generation um, uh, business uh, owner. And uh, Faike Sibesma, uh, CEO and chairman of Royal DSM. Uh, both of you, uh, Faike and Andre, you are known for championing and leading your organizations with purpose. And um, we talked a lot during the annual meeting about um, you know, this notion of stakeholder uh, capitalism. We talked about ESGs, but I wanna dig a little bit into the notion of purpose, into the notion of values. Uh, in a previous conversation, um, somebody uh, ventured that you. Uh, you know, for the sustainability of businesses, the culture may change, but the values stay the same and then maybe dig a little bit into leadership, what kind of leaders do we need and what needs to change today. So uh, I will let you conduct this dialogue. I will start with an opening question, um, which is what personal experience has led you to, um, you know, to take on this very strong approach and, and positioning of driving your organizations, driving your business with purpose? Thank you. Well, <clears throat> I don't think there is one particular moment, one particular uh, experience which has uh, started the process. It's just a, a realization of what's happening around the planet. Um, we, we, we have been uh, using a business model since the beginning of the invention of the company, um, 150 years ago. Uh, uh, accounting system system since 200 years ago. We have created wealth to to um, grow the, the, the planet, to, to, uh, not to grow the planet just a moment, but to grow, to grow the humanity. And um, uh, this system is obviously not working. We're getting to a point where it is at creaking point. We have uh, environmental damages, and my uh, focus is much more on environmental, uh, on uh, biological and environmental than social or, or, or human. And um, uh, we're getting to a point where we need to invent a new system to continue to create the wealth we will need to, co to increase prosperity for the planet. And so um, uh, part of the problem is the, 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 the business, and I hope that part of the solution will be the business as well. So we need to define what, the, what role business can play in the future so that we can help them, to, 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 so that so th these businesses can help humanity to go to the next stage of growth, which is in front of us, especially in terms of demographics. So not to, to, to answer the question to the person who's not moderating, so perhaps I should answer to you. Um, <laughs> uh, the, 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 we need to invent something new as a coexistence among humans. Corporations, in particular business corporations, have a great role to play in this. Of course, not completely disconnected from the, the, the regulatory environment, but as a great contributor to the regulatory environment. In fact, if you want to avert the systemic crisis which is coming towards us, we will need creativity. And nothing has demonstrated more creativity in the, in the, in the past than the cooperation, in the cooperation of uh, companies working together. But for me, it was quite a, a, an easy situation because I came in it as an owner, and I think that family businesses have a, a, an edge on this. You took on a, a publicly listed company, which is a much more challenging situation. So it would be interesting to hear you answer to the same question. Yeah, thank you, André. And indeed, André and I, we know each other well, <clears throat> and we have the same philosophy about uh, that we should drive companies with a purpose uh, for stakeholders, uh, for multi-dimensions, etc. But we come from a different situation uh, because he uh, is a company which also has a private ownership and our company is totally publicly quoted on, on the stock exchange. And what, what happened with me, uh, I was 33 coming in the executive uh, committee uh, of the company, 
And so I made fast career in the beginning uh, of, of my uh, professional life. Uh, and if I'm honest, uh, when I made fast career, I liked it. I said, oh, it's going well with me. <laughs> and, and then I thought, hey, what does that mean? Uh, you get more and more responsibility. You get more and more uh, bigger job. Um, you can impact more people, uh, not only in your company, but even outside your company. And I thought, hey, if I have more impact, uh, what do I do with the responsibility which goes together with that? For our own people, for the planet which we influence with our products and operations, uh, for society and mankind, etc. And then I start more reading about what is the role of business in the world? How did the economy ever start? And yeah, the economy ever started very simple. Um, it's barter trade. One find out that he was better in catching buffaloes and the other was better in growing crops. And he said, if you do the crops, I do the buffaloes. And then we exchanged at the end of the day. And then number three, four, five came and then became too complicated. And then we said, let's invent something to trade. Uh, can we all agree gold is worth a lot? And uh, we exchange with gold. OK, we do so. Uh, you do this, I do this, and we exchange with gold. And then later on, this became too complicated, and we said, can we agree that the gold we put in the bank, later on also not anymore, and we have paper, and we do as the paper is gold, and we exchange with paper, and we call that money. And we did that. And later on, we said, this is too complicated. We write it down in a computer, and we believe that the money is there. The money is not there because only 10% of the money which is there, is really there, the rest is That's not there. That's a secret, nobody's supposed to know <laughs> that. <laughs> uh, so, uh, um, but the economy is just, you do this, I do this, we exchange goods, and we live all here, happily here together. It's not more complicated than that. And the last couple of decades, we derailed a little bit, thinking, I think, that making money is the goal, and making money is, is, is not the goal. And, uh, and therefore, I introduced in our company, uh, when I became CEO 13 years ago, listen, we, we really want to, of course we need to make money, and of course the company needs to be successful. It's not a charity foundation. But equally, equally, we need to take care of society. Equally, we need to take care um, of our planet. Now, like Andre is saying, we are 100% publicly quoted company. When I became CEO, some people said, oops, Equally take care of society, equally take care of the planet. That's not a good CEO. Why did we <laughs> nominate him? Uh, this is not good for our share price. Now, the last 13 years, it went very well, quadrupled. So uh, to, today, people say, OK, the company is successful and took care of the planet and society. So those two things can go hand in hand together. And our philosophy is, no. Those two things, making profit and running companies successful, take care of society, cannot go hand in hand together. They must go hand in hand together. And otherwise, people don't work for your company anymore. They don't buy your products. You lose correctly so your license to operate. And it is not the philosophy. Now, I don't know how this in, 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 in Russia, but I need to say, Andre, that, that from time to time we get pressure from our shareholders. Uh, some love that we mm. take care of all the different stakeholders. But often, I need to say, when I'm on roadshows, I get only the financial questions. Nobody asks all on our climate initiatives or our societal initiatives. Uh, and, 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 and we get pressure on all the things which, which, which we do. And I don't know, you have a partly, you have a, a mix, in fact, in your company, because you are partly privately owned, but you're also publicly quoted. Do you see so, so, a difference uh, uh, in uh, those group of shareholders in the company? Uh, absolutely. Um, there are two parts to, 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 do, to the answer I could make. One, one is, yes, being a, a, a company that is privately uh, controlled 
And you're right to make the distinction because um, we only control the company with 9% of the issued paper. The rest is quoted on the stock exchange, does not give the voting right, is a dividend certificate. And that sort of hybrid structure allows us to be a family controlled business while being uh, in, on the market, quoted on the market, and under the scrutiny of financial analysts. I mean, thousands of analysts follow our every move, and we need to sort of um, talk to them about this quite regularly. But the point I wanted to make uh, early on is this point about the incredible restrictive nature of financial accounting. You know, we have chosen finance to communicate about companies with humanity, and that is, um, it's, it's a, it's convenient, it's, it's useful, we all know that, you know, a franc is a franc, a dollar is a dollar, uh, but it is not the way society functions. This is, not, this is not humanity. Humanity has a lot to do with all sorts of other phenomena. For instance, um, there is Yo-Yo Ma playing in the corridor, which explains why all these are these empty seats anyway. But, uh, so, the, in the, you know, this is art. Art is not uh, something that's linked to, 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 to material goods. And yet we choose to identify business opportunities only based on the profit you can make out of them. That does not correspond to reality. And so what our um, shareholding has allowed us to do at Roche is to bring that a part of enlightening situation. We are not interested at just the financial return. We're also interested into the contribution of our company uh, to its purpose, which is to do today what the patient needs next. It's easier to explain that to shareholders in a pharmaceutical business because yeah. our purpose is, is health. You know, we, the patient is in the middle. We, we, last year, 21 million people took our drugs. We did not uh, you know, uh, succeed with all of them, but a lot of them um, went better thanks to us. We deal with life and death. And that's, of course, a, a purpose which is eminently more <coughs> measurable than, 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 than others. Yeah. So I, I think that's partly the, the, the answer. But for me, uh, being able to, uh, to, to move between the world of NGO and the, wor sorry, the world of, of, of uh, civil society, I've been for a long time on boards of several uh, non-governmental organizations, and the board of b uh, big corporations, um, there is a mission there. There is a bridge to be built. Uh, we are all simple, single humanity. We're all people, and we should work together. For far too long, we had this dichotomy where we said business is bad, business makes money, Ugh. and on the other side, NGOs are good because they spend the money and they do something positive with it. <laughs> it, it it's too simple. You know, we are, we are cleverer than this. Uh, collectively, I give us the gift of, 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 of cleverness. Let's bring the two together. Corporations can achieve their goals, can execute their purpose, can come closer to what they want to do without destroying natural system or social system or, 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 or human uh, relationships. And the NGOs can um, f contemplate the notion of uh, long term and durability if they generate some positive cash flows. So profit is not a swear word. It's something we need to, uh, to, to, to approve. It's something we need to support. But profit at all costs, no. I, so, I, I totally agree. Mm. And it's funny, you say business is sometimes perceived as bad or bad people. You see here two business people uh, and, and NGOs or governments or media are good. Uh, I, I say the same. It is not that after high school, all the people without a heart went to business and all the people with a heart went to government or NGOs. I mean, most people have a heart, by the way. Um, and, and, and I don't believe in good guys and bad guys or good ladies and bad ladies. But uh, life is much more complicated than that. And I, when I get the question, yeah, but why do you really want to take care of the planet, etc.? What is secretly behind that? Because uh, ah, there's a secret business model to make money via those narratives. No, because I have kids, because I think about the world, because I would like to transfer the world when we leave to another generation. That is what we want. Building on that, help me, André. Mm -hmm. Where did we went wrong, if I go back to my philosophy, that the e economy should help to live all here happily together? That's basically the model. You do this, I do this. We exchange, we all live happily here together. And money is just a good to exchange and not more than that. There's only one country in the world, tiny little country, Bhutan, who said basically what we should do is happiness for the people. And if we achieve that, if everybody in the country is happy, we achieved what we want to achieve. 
There's only one tiny little country who did it. The others measured their success, GDP growth, this and that, and state deficit, and, uh, and economic growth. And, uh, that is how we, in your philosophy, how come that there's only one tiny little country who sticked to how we ever started? All the other countries in the world, well, let's be real for a little bit. I, I think humanity in general, and humans in, in the group, have a tendency of behaving a little bit like lemmings. We just follow the same principle. And we just have this notion here that being a proper businessman is taking hard decision. You know, um, you, we have this conversation with friends. I mean, this sort of quasi schizophrenic. We have this conversation with, with, with friends, and in the evening we drink a glass of wine, perhaps two, and we have a discussion about uh, about what the world is all about. And the same guy, the next morning, goes into his office, closes the door, and the only thing that matters is the margin. You know, boom, boom. And it's not because he's a bad guy. Right? It's not because he's uh, somebody who has, is inherently evil, uh, or, or he or she. But, but, but it, it, it's just because that's the societal norm. You know, we reward money with success. I mean, people listen to me because I happen to own a company. Otherwise, they, you know, I would be somebody in the street. And, and, and so th this notion of money representing power, this, money, this notion of money being the best measure we have of success is something we need to change. So. You can see it's uh, societally quite difficult to do. But, but um, uh, to start with, as employer, what we should be saying to people is, it's OK to be nice. You don't have to be a bastard to be successful. <laughs> Come into the office, bring your values with you. And when you take a decision in a business context, take it in the same context that you would in your private life. You know, t talk to your employees like you would to your friends. Talk to your boss like you would to your wife. I mean, there, there's, a, there's something to be built there. And, and, and it agree. starts with values. It starts with a, a, a capacity to be yourself in the office. And I think that's, when I say in the office, it's a conceptual office, of course. But, but it's, it's, it's important to be able to be yourself. Schizophrenia is a disease. And uh, if you cannot live your value into your daily life, you're going to end up a little bit screwed up. And there are no lot of people around here who can demonstrate that, you know? By, by the way, that, that, no, what Andre is saying is, by the way, and then maybe some questions from you. But it is the reason why we are in the Board of Trustees here mm. of the Forum and, and be active here. Um, what we try to contribute, can we not, what the Forum represents, go build further on this whole stakeholder model? Take care of all the interests of all the involved groups, whether it is business or governments or uh, um, uh, academia, uh, NGOs, uh, take care of the planet, take care of society, take care that we continue to run uh, our companies, etc. Take care of all those interests. That is the team uh, this year also, stakeholder model for cohesive, everybody in the boat, and sustainable society. And um, and we find out every single day that there are also factors working against it who do not want to move yet. Okay, uh, and step by step we hope to make progress in the right direction. I remain also saying, and I said it this week a few times, uh, the elite in the world is all here. And you, we are privileged to be here is more or less the top of the world. If you look in the dictionary on the elite, uh, you find a very strange description. People who earns the most, people who are the upper layer of society, people with the most power in society. That is what the dictionary writes about the elite. Those who are privileged. And I add to the dictionary, but I don't write dictionaries, <laughs> but I add to the dictionary. Those who take responsibility for people who maybe do not have the power to influence uh, the world in that direction. If you have the privilege to be here, you better take up the responsibility to do something uh, which influences also the people who cannot be here. If you don't do that, then you belong to the elite in the old way of the world, to be the upper layer, the best income, the most powerful people in the world. Who cares? I care more about the people who take the responsibility to improve the world. That, that is for me the elite. Okay, and we have 
And, and that brings us back to this notion of purpose. Um, um, you are working for a company, so I, I assume that uh, the majority of us have an activity at home and activity in the office. In the office, we work for a cause. The cause is not to make money, the cause is to contribute to yeah. the purpose of the employer that we happen to work with, be it a government, be it a company, be it whatever. And so th th this notion of working for something else than just material satisfaction is a very important notion. If there is one uh, that you that, that you should take home with you, it's this one. How can you find your, your, your daily activity, how can you frame it into something that fulfills you, you, your values? Not necessarily the values of society, but your own. And I think that, that, that that's a very important key to, 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 to moving forward. You know what, André, uh, I had yeah. to, you, you talked about uh, Rush making the medicines and making people mm -hmm. healthier. Yeah. That, that's what he is doing. Uh, we are providing food ingredients, making food healthy, etc. I was in a session two days ago, and somebody said, yeah, you have an easy uh, story because you make sustainable energy in your company and you make healthier food ingredients. So of course you have a purpose. And he could say that they may be to Andre also. Yeah. Our company, he, that person said, is not contributing anything to society. So we found it much more difficult to define their purpose. <laughs> and I said, could you repeat that sentence? <laughs> I said, but yeah, you have an easy story, Mr. Sibutman. I said, but you said your company not is not contributing anything to society? And it shouldn't exist. And I said, exactly that. I said, then please repeat that sentence for the mirror next evening and see how long you will exist. Because if you don't contribute anything to society, I don't want to be rude, but why are you here <laughs> in society? I think we made our point. Yes, yeah, question. So, 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 you, know, um, <clears throat> you, you, you asked the question, <coughs> where did it go wrong? And when did it go wrong, right? So those are the two questions, because it's so sort of obvious what we are discussing here. Right? Yeah that you are just, you know, as a leader, like one person at home, your personal life and your, you know, your professional life, you know, there is no difference. And of course, you, you serve your family and your, your professional family as well. So, and, and we might, if we go back in history after like the, into, in the golden age, after second world war, you know, leadership was a little different. And, and there are a few inflection points since then. And we discussed a lot about, you know, the 1970, the Friedman, um, Chicago School of Economics um, <clears throat> and shareholder value concept. So where and when did it go wrong? And what can we do to undo it? We have to undo it. We have to go back to this very natural kind of leadership that existed at some point at least. And and isn't it sort of the leadership sort of selection and education? Isn't, isn't it that, that we need to actually look at sort of what are the leaders that we select to run the business? The business has to heal society. Politics is not able to really heal society, so the business world has to do it by bringing yeah. you know, our yeah. society yeah. again a little bit so, so more together. I don't like the, the philosophy of back to basics. I like the idea of forward to basics. You know, we need to, we do not need to, to, to bounce back, we need to bounce forward. And, 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 and for me, um, uh, this can-do attitude, this attitude that we do have issues in front of us, we can solve them, is something we need to submit to move. I completely agree, we need a new brand of, 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 of managers, we need a new brand of leaders who are trying to not only pro propose a financial return, but also a social and environmental return. So we need to change the way we teach business education. And I, I think the, the major uh, uh, business schools in the planet should take notice, and some of them are. And I have some examples if you want later on. <laughs> Actually, this requires a total change in the way we assess people in our organizations. Today, a guy who is achieving the targets by hook or by crook, he's the guy he gets assessed as a very hard taskmaster, a guy who goes up in the ladder and we never check the real core values of that person. So unless we do that, unless the performance matrix is kept slightly aside, we will never have this change. It will only remain a discussion point because we always want a guy who performs, who delivers at whatever cost. And he is like lauded in the industry. You know? So I think the basic assessment by which the leaders are assessed and brought up in the ladder, that needs a change. I know it's very difficult, 
But then that's the way I think it is. Mm. I, I totally agree with you. And Andre is helping business schools to develop a different level of MBA uh, education and a different level of, of uh, future leaders. Uh, by the way, most business schools still in the world teach finance, marketing, uh, technology and innovation management, Ethics. and general <laughs> management, and then you have your MBA and you can lead the business. And, and maybe in the side there is one course if you want on values and other stuff, etc. But this is the core of you being a leader. And, and Andre is helping uh, um, uh, to change that, which, which I uh, like. And you add to that, in the companies, uh, assess whether you represent the values. And I agree, the most dangerous species in any company are people who do not really stand for the values of the company, but very successful. Uh, and normally, if they're very successful in their business goals, they have a lot of power in the company. And if they do not represent the values of the company, but are very impactful because they get their results, it's a very dangerous species in a, in a company. I mean, the people who do not respect the values and not perform, most likely they get out of the company. So I, I agree with you. It's very important to, to see that. And building on your question also, I see, I'm an optimist, I see a little bit of a change. But your point is right. 30 years ago, we had an economi economist like Milton Friedman, etc., who said, it's all about shareholders' value. We had CEOs like Jack Wells who said, all about shareholders' value. We had code of conduct in countries. We said, you should take care of your shareholders. That's your fiduciary duty. And that served as really nothing in the last 30 years. You see in the climate, you see in the hunger, you see in the inequalities. We see people who are angry and are protesting. And we are step by step, two forward, one back, two forward, moving hopefully to a new area with developing people in different ways. But the, the question that, uh, is this, uh, we agree that we need leadership. And then you come back to this definition of elite. What is the elite? What had, so uh, if, you, if you measure it against purpose, if you measure it about outcome against purpose, I think you are likely to get a much clearer answer than if you only I look agree. at a salary level. Uh, I think it's going to be the last one, because uh, the, 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 the room is uh, <laughs> occupied afterwards. So that's going to be the last question. Sorry. So I'm, I'm trying to build one of those different business schools. Um, Great. My question is around uh, leadership. If we, we give our ch children rules and then they become pretty religious about following these rules, we are animals built for simple stories. And the both of you talked about very nuanced stories. It's not just this KPI, it's, it's two of those KPIs. What, for the two of you, was the thing that made you able to hold these multiple perspectives. Uh, leadership or wisdom is the ability to hold multiple perspectives. What made you able to do so? Because most of us can't, 75% of adults can't. And what do you do to install that in your, in your people? But, but, but it was a bit of the beginning question. You know, how, how, do you, how do you sort of wake up to the notion that purpose for a company is as important as profitability? Uh, in, in my case, it's, it's, it's my history. I grew up in a, natural, um, uh, in, a, in a natural world environment. My father was a conservationist, an ecologist, an ornithologist, a specialist on birds. Uh, I, always woke up, I always grew up with this notion of nature, um, w got, got uh, involved into NGOs quite early, and then at a later age went into the family business. So, so you know, the, the, the two experiences, the two, two tracks were, were in parallel. So that, 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 that allows me to have different perspectives. In fact, it forces me to have different perspectives. I, I, I don't know if you want to, to tackle yeah, that. I, it's maybe a strange answer, and then we need to close, but I close them with a little bit strange thing. I realized that one day I will leave this planet, and, and we all know that. Uh, we don't like it, but we all know that one day will be the last day. And already for quite some decades, I realized there will be a last day then I will leave. There will be a last week, a last month. Uh, and at the end of your life, you will reflect a little bit and look back. And I will discuss with my kids and my wife, how was my life? And I predict that a little bit for myself. What, what kind of discussion do I want to have? And what kind of discussion will I have? And I want to have the discussion that I inherited 
the planet in a nice status from our parents. We lived well. And I want to finish that sentence. And I realized also that we borrowed the planet from you and we handed over in a good state that you, the next generation, can continue. And since I predict that I want to have that discussion at that moment in time, I need to do now different things and different perspectives, like you said. If I don't do that now, then I won't be able to have that discussion at that moment in time, and I will regret it then, and then it is too late. It's a little bit, maybe it's a little bit philosophical, but that is what I put in my mind why I do the things that I do. <clears throat> very, very powerful remarks. I'm not sure I can add anything to that. But, but um, uh, you know, I would like to say, uh, since it is the, the, the closing statement, how incredibly excited I am about what has, happening, what has been happening over the past four days. The, the, the issue that there is a limit to growth, the issue that we live in a one planet system and that we are not going to be able to continue on the current path is becoming apparent to a lot of people. I see new models, I see new thinking, I see people who I never knew would articulate the world environment or biodiversity talking about it, and that is really exciting. So, um, you know, we are making an impact on the rest of the planet, we are realizing it, and now we're going to take control to do that better in the future.